Heavenly Father, you have given us the model of life in the Holy Family of Nazareth. Help us, O loving Father, to make our family another Nazareth where love, peace, and joy reign. May we love one another as God loves each one of us more and more each day and forgive each other's faults as you forgive our sins. Help us, loving Father, to take whatever you give and give whatever you take with a big smile. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of A Life of Giving. Every year at this time, A Life of Giving takes a special look into the events of the past year. We look at some highlights from the show, and we also discuss charities, generally Reverend Richard Klingeisen, your host's favorite charities. And we're going to do just that this year, of course, but we might even have a couple of extra little surprises along the way. So sit back, make yourselves comfortable, and enjoy the show. Now, I want to speak specifically about uh, St. Gianna Mala Guild, because I think they can provide an interesting angle here with their work, given their aim, which is to foster growth and development of the next generation of Catholic medical professionals. Is there a shared Catholic perception of COVID-19 and or how to deal with it? Uh, what has changed for the guild? Anything? I think the guild has become more aware. You know, the guild is a kind of uh, it's under the Catholic Medical Association right. of the United States, and the particular guides and, and suggestions uh, that are, uh, come out at this particular time are that there's a, just a greater emphasis on how do we respect the dignity of the people that we care for as professional physicians. Uh, in the past, many times a doctor, you know, using good uh, technique in terms of communication and that would focus mostly on the physical aspect simply, the medical need, and then let a chaplain or a social worker or even the nursing staff uh, spend a little bit more time with that patient to uh, support them. Uh, today, with what's going on with the COVID-19, there's, there's more restrictions. I mean, uh, even in hospitals, in long-term care facilities, uh, restrictions with visitors, even immediate family, and maybe they might let one be present in some institutions, depending on, on uh, what the particular illness is uh, for the person and how severe it is mm -hmm. and unfortunately spiritually um, sometimes chaplains have not been allowed to spend as much time as they did in the past with a COVID positive patient so um, the emphasis of the Catholic Medical Association and St. John of Mola Guild is that we've become just completely committed to spending a little bit more time with the people that they serve and respecting that the need for companionship, support as much as they can offer. Locally in the community, you know, yeah, there's, there's outreach in various ways to help um, the people that are in need in terms of mostly food assistance. Uh, from people or organizations like uh, the St. Vincent de Paul Society, uh, Salvation Army, Goodwill, uh, there are various food pantries that are connected with our churches and they're all making uh, concerted efforts to get their membership of churches or the community uh, to help donate financially or food uh, canned foods, box foods, uh, whatever uh, they need. Uh, some of them will put out lists, in fact, that will help uh, the shopper to know exactly what would be helpful. In fact, uh, I might mention that one of my pastoral duties is to 
work with the, the parishes that I pastor, and one of them has put out a um, printout for the uh, congregation if they want to, in terms of exactly what would be beneficial for a nursing home uh, patient. Uh, what are they looking for? What do they need? at this time. And, uh, Last year, you told your audience about a charity organization verification website so people could find out how the money is directed, if everything is on the level. Um, could you please tell us the name and web address of that site again? I think there's a lot, there are a lot of people out there who could greatly benefit by knowing this. I believe I mentioned Charity Navigator. Uh, that's one that I usually reflect myself when I want to check out an organization. Uh, the website would be charitynavigator.org and um, they give you all kinds of information in terms of uh, quality do uh, charities to donate to. They'll also list for you some of those that they think are very inappropriate because they're spending too much money uh, on the people who are running it rather than on the program itself. Right. And uh, there's some pretty extremes there. So um, it's a good, it's just a good website to check out. That's and, good. And uh, help make you feel comfortable in your choice of what charities you really want to support that are donating the money to the cause of helping people. Uh, That's... In whatever way that is, uh, building, building homes, uh, if it's Habitat for Humanity, for example, yeah. or if it's uh, drilling wells for fresh water in Haiti or these other places, which is uh, where some of the money for Cross Catholic outreach goes. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, of course, uh, food support as well. Great. Can you give the audience any hints regarding what might be discussed in the second season? It's a good question. I gave them that some serious thought. I'm thinking that with my background and experience with health care, that I would like to offer some opportunities to reflect on what is good care for our elderly, mm -hmm. especially, again, as they've been kind of locked down in their nursing homes and, and, and it's been a real challenge. Um, but not only how they're cared for there, but also you know what's appropriate care from a medical, physical point of view for that person. Also thinking maybe it would be worth taking a little time talking about the issue of pro-life or the unborn and newborn. Very good. Um, just some thoughts that initially have crossed my mind. I think those are some excellent ideas and I, uh, I look forward to, to taking that journey with you. Do you think you could leave us today with a prayer and or passage to end 2020? Oh yes, I can do that. And in fact, what I did I just sent out to my parishioners the following prayer that was actually offered through our Sunday visitor uh, who did the mailing for me, but it's a beautiful little prayer. I'd like to share it as we close today. Uh, Heavenly Father, you've given us the model of life in the Holy Family of Nazareth. Help us, O loving Father, to make our family another Nazareth where love, peace, and joy reign. May we love one another as God loves each one of us more and more each day and forgive each other's faults as you forgive our sins. Help us, loving Father, to take whatever you give and give whatever you take with a big smile in Christ. Amen. Ah, uh, the crime episode.
uh, officially titled Me, 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 <laughs> for obvious reasons based on what you just said. Uh, that's become an instant classic already, and it deals with the recent crime surge and overall deterioration of society. Even murder or mass murder is commonplace now. I want to ask you, when someone commits murder, does God forgive that person? What happens to his or her soul? And that's something that I think a lot of people likely felt uh, should have been asked in that episode. So what do you have to say to that? Again, the question is one that ultimately perhaps is answered directly by God himself, Jesus, who suffered and died for us as sinners. However, we as followers of Jesus have a choice um, based on the fact that we have free will. We can choose to follow the voice of Jesus and, and again it's you know, to show respect and love for one another so that there is not this ongoing act of murder and uh, suicides etc that take life the question there then is the people that do that what is driving them are they so distraught by their own life? Are they depressed? Are they anxious? Are they so um, against anything that God says that they cannot control their behaviors? I would think that God would look at that as the ultimate judge and forgive them. However, there may be people out there and we have to, you know, even though it's something we don't promote, but there are certain people that say, I know what I was doing. I wanted to do it. I didn't like that people, that, that person or those people. And so I decided to murder them. And if they're not sorry for it, uh, technically God is, uh, is lamenting their choice. And, um, they're making a choice for eternal separation from God then. Yeah. Now, the season two premiere of your podumentary, and I mentioned this a little while ago, it was called Special in God's Eyes. It was a four-part miniseries, of course, as many out there listening will know. And it was all about right to life, and religious liberty issues. Now we're seeing the issue of abortion in this country reach a fever pitch with the recent Supreme Court leak uh, to do with Roe v. Wade. Why do so many people and institutions push so hard for abortion? Isn't there any other way? Well, it's really, I think, a matter of people's understanding of what life is and isn't about. Um, the group that continues to push for it, you know, they're advocates for a woman's right to choose. Um, and so the, they look at this whole situation to say, well, you can't tell that woman she can't choose to do that if she wants to do it. Um, because they kind of ignore part of the other morality of this, and that is a statement that was made earlier that we are all to respect human life. That's really what God had in mind. Um, and so if we do that, then we'll approach this differently. Um, so that's the other way to try and create within our society an awareness that really what is being taught to us by God himself in the sacred scriptures is not to be something to be totally ignored. And it seems that uh, these groups that are promoting abortion, and, and, uh, and just to stick with that, I mean, they're, they're, not, they're not showing the respect that God wants for us in human life. Right, right. And in God's eyes, how important is it to bring new life into this world? 
Well, he, um, in the words of uh, the writings of Moses in the first book of the Bible, in the book of Genesis, I'd like to quote three verses from Genesis, okay. where God says, or Moses writes and says, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over the wild animals, and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the divine image, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it.